groups. Um, so let's talk about first some of the unique characteristics of mammals. They have mammary glands, glands that are adapted to producing milk, which is used to nourish their newborn offspring. So mammals produce milk. <clears throat> mammals also have fur or hair at some point during their life. Some have more, some have less, some have hair and then lose it, but all mammals have hair or fur. Are mammals the smartest? Like um, mammals have the most well-developed brains, so most likely, yes. Are dolphins smarter than humans? Some humans. I read the book. That's a good book. Especially the little movie. And I, I don't know if it's a little movie. I don't know. Alright, they also have a four chambered heart. Yeah, now we're off of the unique adaptations. We're talking about the general characteristics. So the four chambered heart, like birds did. Raise your hand if you could tell me what is the benefit of a four chambered heart? How is that helpful? Linda? Oh, can I say something that's not helpful? Like, <laughs> no, I'm asking for how that is, is helpful. That means I would ask you to tell me why it is, not why it isn't. Surrender, okay. This isn't war, but Ryan. Uh, there's no difference between the oxygen and the blood oxygen. That's correct. So there is no mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. And that's a benefit because it allows the deoxygenated blood to be sent directly where? Deoxygenated blood gets sent directly to the lungs. Oxygenated blood gets sent directly to every, every body parts, every other body part, correct. Mammals have a diaphragm that's used for breathing, a sheet of muscle dividing the um, abdomen from the thoracic cavity, which relaxes and contracts, inflating and deflating the lungs. It's different than, for example, reptiles, which contract their body muscles, the body wall that allows them to move. In and out. So all yeah. <laughs> and mammals generally have a highly developed brain compared to the other types of vertebrates. Why are they more developed? It's just that's just what they are. What's that? They, all animals have evolved, but just because they're successful with the traits that they have. You know? All right. Also, mammals are warm-blooded, maintaining a constant body temperature. You know, most placental mammals maintain a body temperature similar to us in the high 90s, although some have lower body temperature. We'll talk about some of those. So mammals include a few different groups. Um, and we'll talk about a couple of the sort of unique ones where there's just a few of these. Um, the first group are called the monotremes. And so when we were going over characteristics, some of you said live birth. And I said sort of, or most. Because there are some exceptions. You were right. The vast majority of all mammals have live birth. Okay? But there are a couple exceptions. And one of those exceptions are the monotremes. The monotremes are egg-laying mammals. Does anybody know an egg-laying mammal? Julia? Yeah, platypus is an egg-laying mammal. Um, and there's one other. Do you know, Tom? A whale. No. I mean, no, that's a reptile. 
No. No. Um, the other one is called an echidna, a spiny anteater. And um, so these are egg-laying mammals. So they're unique. Okay, they're uh, duck-billed platypus is one of them. And platypus is an interesting um, organism. They are native to Australia, that area. Um, and they lay eggs. And when the pelts and drawings of the platypus were first sent to Europe, um, scientists thought they were um, a hoax. They thought somebody had taken parts of different animals and sort of sewed them together. This duck bill platypus has a bill, sort of like a duck. It has webbed feet, but it has fur and a beaver-like tail. So it has sort of these interesting features that are quite unique. Um, the other one is the spiny anteater, also a monotreme, also an egg-laying mammal. Also in Australia. And they do lay eggs that are quite small. And when they hatch, they hatch into very um, small, immature young that must be cared for. So here we have a platypus with a, platypus with a few um, young. Uh, after they hatch out of the egg, they basically stay with the mother, nursing, um, until they develop enough to become independent. It usually uh, takes a while. Okay? Uh, the platypus is mainly aquatic, lives in the water, around the water. Um, eats worms and other, it's a kind of worm, eats worms and stuff in the, in the water, in the soil, in the mud. Um, they have some interesting characteristics as well. Um, the platypus has um, special cells in its bill that can sense electrical signals. In fact, when it dives looking for food, the platypus has its eyes closed the whole time. But it uses these electrical sensors in its bill to sort of dig through the mud, and it senses the muscular movements, which produce a small electric current that it sends it to. It uses those um, electrical currents to actually find living prey. It also has male platyp platypuses have um, venom. They're one of the few venomous mammals. They have two spurs, two um, spurs near their hind limbs um, that can inject a venom. Um, they don't use it to get prey, um, but maybe as a defense mechanism, maybe um, to fight for mates, um, but they're one of the few venomous um, mammals. So um, platypus are pretty interesting creatures. Brandon? Sometimes you'll see them at the zoo. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen any. No. Jimmy? Yeah. Those are only Yeah. Females have the um, little spurs, but they don't produce the venom. Um, I'm not sure of the other poisonous male. So, yeah, anyone here is familiar with Now, the echidna. The spiny anteater is another um, monotreme. It's the only other one. There's only two. There's a, the same. No, you guys don't have this side. The platypus and the spiny anteater. Kidna are kind of interesting. The milk that they produce is actually pink uh, because it's very rich in iron. So if you go to the cafeteria and get that pink milk, it's a kidna milk. Okay, really? No, that's right. Do we have to write this? No. Um, no, it's not. Yeah. Strawberry kidna milk. Um, so a kitten, uh, again, produce eggs, very, very small. They produce just one egg at a time. Okay? When it hatches into a tiny little immature young, um, which they then um, will nurse until they reach maturity. Okay, that's one, a young, when it's just about um, independent. And then they develop their spines. They look kind of like a porcupine. They have a long snout, which is their nose and their mouth. And they basically hunt for insects, and that's that's what they eat. What's that? All right. The second group, so the monotremes, the egg-laying mammals. The second group are marsupials, which you're probably more familiar with. 
And the marsupials give birth to young that are, again, quite immature, but they give birth to live young. They don't lay eggs. They give birth to live young that are quite immature. And the, the young make their way to the pouch where they sort of finish out their development. Yeah, and examples obviously are what? Kangaroo. Kangaroo. Koalas. Not sloth. Okay, kangaroos, koalas. In North America, the only marsupial that we have in North America is the opossum. So when, and don't get confused, it says only one, it doesn't mean there's only one opossum in North America. It means there's only one type of marsupial in North America, the opossum. And so what you see here is the young, this is a kangaroo, and the, the young is very small. This little red thing is the, it's almost like an embryo. So the Mother gives birth to this tiny little embryo, or I guess it's a newborn, because it is out of the womb, and it then crawls um, up into the pouch. That little tiny thing grabs on, it has no hind legs, it just has front legs, it can um, smell the mother's pouch, so after it's born, basically makes its way, climbs up the mother's fur, into the pouch, where it then spends the next, whatever, nine months um, nursing, Okay, the mammary glands are in the pouch, and it nurses, grows larger, continues to develop until it starts to become independent. And for example, in kangaroos, um, the joey, which is a young kangaroo, will come out of the pouch, move around, learn how to walk, learn how to find food and so on, but then go back up until almost two years, the until it's fully always independent. So um, they have to take care of their young for an expensive period of time, right? <laughs> it's a good question, and there's a reason. Does anybody know why are many of the animals in Australia unique? <laughs> right? Because Australia is an island nation, and all the fish came up there. Well, not so much the fish, but you started off the right track. Tom, do you have an answer? No. <laughs> so I, Nicholas, you want to explain? Yes, because Australia, a large island, so there's lots of species there, but was is separate from mainland. You know, on the mainland, there's lots of interchange of species migrating and moving and interbreeding and so forth. But when you have an isolated population that's kept separate from the rest of the uh, of species, they start to evolve and develop unique adaptations, okay, and unique characteristics that make them sort of different. Because there was no interbreeding, those characteristics weren't spread from place to place. So isolated populations often will evolve to become um, quite different from other species because of that isolation. And isolation is what um, forces new species um, to develop. Like when we talked about evolution, we looked at those salamanders in California that were split, and the, as the population split and went in different areas, each of those populations evolved differently. One evolved bright colors, one evolved camouflage, and so they started becoming different from each other because they were separated and isolated. An island just makes that even more true. Brent? Maybe. Sophia? Can I relate the what movie? There's two. <laughs> yes, there's kangaroo, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, here's kangaroo, koala, another koala, and baby koala. I want a baby koala. <laughs> and an opossum. This is an opossum. They do live around here. Um, you'll see them once in a while. Most of, they're usually nocturnal. Most often you'll see them kind of dead on the side of the road. 